what I do a lot of times is um, sometimes I, you have a hard time with uh, transfer of heat. If you just, you know, if you take your soldering iron and you just put the sponge on it, it's nice and shiny, but sometimes it doesn't want to transfer the heat that well. So what I do a lot of times is I'll just put a tiny little blob on it like that. And I still solder the way you're supposed to. You hold the, the, the solder on the opposite side of what you're soldering and let the heat melt the solder like that, okay? You still get a nice solder joint, nice shiny one. Um, but instead of, uh, it's a fraction of the time waiting for the part to heat up. Um, anyways, the heat shrink did shrink up enough, but I think it'll be enough to where I can slip it over. And sure enough, I can. Okay, now that'll protect that lead from ever touching there. Um, I usually use a heat gun, but you can also do it this way too. Just take your soldering iron. Basically what you want here is you want um, to find something to point with. You want to make sure that this end on this side is a less of a diameter than the middle part. That way it can't slip back and forth. It's, it's on there permanently. And there's a couple of pieces of solder on there and just kind of push off and... Okay. Now let's rent rebend this. Okay. The writing is up so you can read it. Let me get this wire out of the way a little bit here. And uh Again, with this one, I can use, um, I have a um, soldering gun that I could heat this up with and uh, desolder it. But if I've got enough lead here, I might just go ahead and do the same thing I did over here. Just bend the lead over. Just a, the smallest of a blob of solder you can put on the back. Well, actually, see how small that is on the tip? I don't know if you can see that. But that's really small. That's good. This transfers the heat better, but you still, I said, you still heat up the joint the same way. So you still get the right flow of solder, and it's a nice, good, shining, firm.
fancy and straighten out the lead so it looks a little more professional. Like that, something like that. All right, we're good to go. And uh, let's see, that's one capacitor. Okay, now I have replaced all the capacitors, all the paper capacitors, and all the electrolytics. And now the next step is to replace the auto tolerance resistors. And then at that stage, I think it's time to give it a go. So, um, that 20 microfarad electrolytic that I was talking about, that I was just going to temporarily tack in, is this one here. It's just a short distance from here uh, to the rectifier tube. And um, it'll make it easier to swap it out with a 40 back and forth. And I haven't put in the CL90 thermistor yet, but I probably will do that pretty soon here. Um, so, next step, resistors. Well, here's the capacitors that I removed. The next two images show the amount of room I have gained inside the chassis with replacing these old capacitors with the new ones. Okay, on to replacing out of tolerance resistors. We'll start off on our list. And the first one that I found that was bad. Out of tolerance was R3. R3 is a 3.3 mega ohm, 20%, one quarter watt resistor. Um, what I did is when I replaced the parts, all the quarter watt ones, I replaced with half watt ones. They have a higher voltage rating, so I figured eh, all the better. So, anyways, um, this is R3. R3 in the circuit is this guy right here okay and in the chassis it is get something to point with so it should be orange orange green and it is that one right there now I already clipped this lead here so I could test it outside of the circuit I already ordered it figured it was bad but sometimes you know if it's clipped in the circuit readings can be affected. So, um, before I do replace it, I clip the lead just to make sure that it really is off. And, lift this uh, side up. I've already got my meter hooked up. I'm running. I'm just got to clip on the leads. Oh, by the way, I've already got it. I've already got the leads clipped on a new replacement 3.3 mega ohm. Anyways, as you can see, it's pretty close to 3.3 mega ohm. Okay, so it can be 20% out of tolerance. 20% out of tolerance, well, that would be 300K plus or minus times 2, 600K. So it could be as high as um, 3.9 .9 mega ohm. I keep saying K, but I mean mega ohm. Uh, 3.9 mega ohm. And um, if we connect the leads, to resistor here, and the point that it goes to, which is here, let's try that one again. When we look at the re meter, it settles down right between 5.4, right around there. Okay. Well, that's way above 3.9 mega ohms, so that's definitely way out of tolerance. So I'll be replacing all the ones that I measured before that are out of tolerance, and then we'll give it a go. Fire it up and see how she works.